One of the things I will say is that this is, a, this is an introduction to an activity. This is not a short sermon and then you can go home. So I'll try to make it short enough that you'll have some time for the activity. Um, but in, and I'll give you uh, the activity at the end. I do want to take the text that he had in mind, and that's uh, Acts chapter 4. Tremendous chapter, a crucial chapter in the book of Acts in the story of the church, in the story of the progress of the church. If you remember chapter 3, they've all, the, uh, the apostles have already been beat and told not to preach anymore. And then they go out and they start doing what? Preaching some more, right? And so it's for, for all of us who are preachers, it's the warning that, uh, you know what? It doesn't matter what people tell you. Yeah, it, this is a message that cannot be restrained. But chapter 4 uh, sets the setting here. And I'm just going to read this for you and uh, highlight a few points. So if you want to get out your Bibles and read along with me, this is Acts chapter 4. The priests and the people of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people, proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John, and because it was evening, they put them in jail till the next day. But many who heard the message believed, so the number of men who believed grew to about 5,000. So from what we know, about 3,000, well, we had a 2,000 increase in a short period of time. And some of this is because of the miracles that are being done by the apostles and the attention that's being drawn and the preaching that's going on. The next day, the rulers and elders and the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, the famous old Annas, who was involved in the, in the execution of Jesus, was there, and so were Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and others of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them, by what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called into account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, by that very statement he's implying that's not the real reason they're there, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, this man stands before you healed. So basically, brings it right back to the problem, and that is they don't like the message of Jesus. They're resisting the message of Jesus. And the message of Jesus is bringing them into a bad light. What has happened now with Jesus in his execution and then in his resurrection puts them in a bad place. So then he quotes uh, from Psalm 118, Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for though there is no name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing much they could say. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin. They conferred together and what uh, what are we going to do with these men, they asked. It's kind of the same question they were asking about Jesus, right? Everyone living in Jerusalem knows they have performed a notable sign and we cannot deny it. But to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn them to speak no longer to anyone in this name. Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, which is right in God's eyes to listen to you or to him? You be the judges. As for us, we cannot help but speaking about what we've seen and heard. After further threats, they let them go. They could not decide how to punish them because all the people were praising God for what had happened. For the man who was miraculously healed was over 40 years old. So then they're released, and what do they do? And this is the, the point of the lesson today. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. And then they included in this prayer that they prayed together a text from the Psalms again uh, in Psalm 2. Why do the nations rage and the people's plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed. Indeed, Herod and Pilate met to get, Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. 
They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Several things here, but one of the, I think the things that Kevin wanted us to get key here is that when we pray, it's great for us to include in our prayers scripture. I don't know how often you have an opportunity to do that, but when you're praying scripture, you're praying something that is not just the words of man, but is the thoughts of God, thoughts that he wants to give you. And to include them in your prayers and build, build your prayers around scripture is a very, uh, a very recommended thing, something you see happening in the examples throughout the Bible and right here specifically in this one. What did they pray for? They prayed for boldness. And we need to pray for boldness, not just in circumstances like this, but if we don't have this one in our pocket when these kind of circumstances come up, how are we going to be able to, to pray like this? this? These prayers had a tremendous impact. Notice in verse 31, after they prayed, and this was, this was a community prayer. This was not one guy standing up. These were the whole group was praying this prayer. It says, after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. When we pray out of the word of God, out of the promises of God, out of scripture, our prayers can be that much more powerful. And uh, so I would encourage you to, remind, to get down a lot of scripture. Make sure that scripture is in your prayers and to uh, build your prayers around scripture. That's one of the things that I think Kevin really wanted to get across to us today if he had been able to be here. One of the first prayers we can pray is that Kevin can get back on his feet and this vertigo is uh, no longer affecting him. That we have lots to pray about. Um, what we're going to encourage everybody to do is either stay in here or go out in the other rooms or outside in small groups, you know, maybe family groups, maybe just a, a couple of you together. Don't, don't run off. Don't just run off. Take this time. This is part of our worship today is to spend some time in prayer together. And if you look at the bulletin, there's a whole list, whole list of people that were being requested to pray for on the front. And some of them we've been praying for for a long time. A couple of updates. One of them is that Monique uh, Buchanan's father, who we have on here to be praying for, he did pass away um, yesterday. So uh, you can pray for their family in this uh, very difficult time for them, uh, for all those. And a lot of their family is in this church. So um, be praying for the Buch uh, Buchanan family. Another one is Elisa Ramirez. That's um, the Murguia's mother. Uh, she, she passed away as well uh, just this weekend. And so be praying for uh, all of the uh, Ramirez family, the Murguia family, and also for um, Fernando, who's here with Sandy Olagabel, his daughter. So pray for the Olagabel's family and also for the Murguia family, if you would, and for Fernando. Um, Elisa's husband. We know that in, uh, in, in the Lord there's great hope and there's great rejoicing as people pass to the next life. Um, so there's also an element for those of us who are in Christ that we have no reason to grieve in the passing of our loved ones, but actually rejoicing. Uh, that, and we don't grieve like the world grieves, at least, let's put it that way. Um, there's others on here. I won't list them all. You'll need to get a bulletin if you want to, to go through. And these should be prayers. These are just the opportunity to pray for that. The, the things that uh, we can do is pray for the ministry of this church. Pray for the uh, list in the bulletin, the people that are on the list in the bulletin, and also for any personal needs in the group that you end up uh, gathering together with. So let me just uh, close this out with a word of prayer here, but then kind of group off as you can in here or in the hallways or outside and take a few minutes to pray together. Uh, before you leave or before you go off into other fellowship. Let's pray. Father, we're so thankful <clears throat> that we have the ability to come directly to you with confidence in you, that you hear our prayers because we, um, with hearts set on you, set on your purposes, bring them to you. Father, we do care for our brothers and sisters who are suffering right now and grieving. We ask that you be with them. We thank you that there is a hope that we share in that is greater than this life and that death uh, is not the final victory, but that we have victory in your son Jesus and in his resurrection, the very resurrection that was being proclaimed here in Acts chapter 4. 
May we be proclaimers of that hope. Thank you for the way that today, even as we shared in the, in the supper, that we were again declaring our faith that Jesus died and that Jesus was raised. Father, we pray for uh, the physical healing of many among us. And Father, we know that they were praying for healing, the ability to heal and to see people healed among the early Christians, those 5,000 that were gathered. What an amazing crowd that must have been, Father, to be a part of. We pray that your name will be glorified, not only in this day, but in our lives day to day, and that you will go with us as we um, now participate in this activity of, of prayer together. In Jesus' name, amen.